Hi fam, it is I Smriti of how Sunday morning rain is falling. It was falling actually. It's not falling right now, but there are some very angry clouds out there. So I definitely think that it will fall at some point in time in this morning. Anyway, I am here today to tell you and recommend some queer books to you. But before I do that, I am going to give you a little bit of a warning before I give you another bit of a warning. Anyway. Um, the warning is that my AC is on because the summer or the monsoons have started, are kind of starting here in Bombay and it gets really hot and really humid. So, um, and my AC makes a bit of noise right now and I can't call anyone to fix it. So, we're just gonna have to deal with that, okay? It's cool. I'm, I'm not gonna sit in the heat to film this video. I love you guys, but I will melt. Be a good thing. You think I lose weight? No, never mind. Okay, getting into the actual introduction of this video, I am here to recommend you some um, queer books. It is Pride Month, um, and I um, love queer books. I think um, books that are by LGBTQ authors or have characters in them are just some of my favorite of all times, and I'm just going to recommend a few of them right now um but before i do that i wanted to tell you that i am straight i am um i may not be the best person to kind of make this judgment in terms of what might be good and might not be bad uh what is good representation what is not because how much ever i read um i will not know um because that's just not who i am um so i will be linking a lot of videos down and a lot of um, re like resources um, as well as a lot of um, LGBTQ um, content creators, book book content creators um, who you can follow um, and see their recommendations um, because they would kind of make more sense. But also see mine because I really like these books. So, you know, just keep that in mind. Um, I have also linked down um, this Goodreads shelf of mine, which I've been like collating over the last um, few weeks and actually like years technically um, of like queer books that I have read, want to read. Um, and if you have any recommendations or books that you want to read or have read that you really like, please do let me know and comment below because I want to read more of them. They're like the best. So Without further ado, I'm just going to get into my first recommendation. So my first recommendation is Two Boys Kissing by David Levitt. Now this book is one of my all-time favorite books ever. Uh, this book follows multiple people, but the main people are these two boys whose name are... Oh, wait, what? What? Huh? Oh, Craig and Harry. Why have I forgotten them? Anyway, um, so basically they have a friend of theirs um, who is also gay and is beaten up. Um, and Craig and Harry were a couple at one point in time. Um, but when they see that this boy is beaten up, they want to do something to showcase the um, same-sex love. Um, and what they do is that they decide to um, break the world record for the longest kiss. So that's like I think over like 24 hours where they have to kiss and it's very strenuous and um, all of that and um, yeah that's basically what they set out to do. Um, at the same point in time there are these other couples, there are Peter and Neil, um, Avery and Brian and there's Cooper. So there's um, some trans representation, there is um, representation of a gay couple that already exists and um, are happy and are doing well. Um, there is a there's a representation of a boy who um, is closeted and doesn't know what to do about his feelings. Um, and I just thought this was so beautifully well written. And the reason why I loved it more than anything, which a lot of people thought was like on the nose, but I just really loved, um, was that it was narrated by the ghost of also of the men who died um of the aids epidemic so i just like th this book is just full of like these little like lines that i just keep like wanting to get back into and it's like really simple and just easy to read i just flew through this and 
kind of like reread some lines um from time to time because I just find it so nice and I love it and it's just I love this book so much. <laughs> the next book that I want to talk about is The Miseducation of Cameron Post. Now this one's a little bit of a chunko. I think it's about mm, 500 pages but and it did take me a bit to kind of get into um but then I kind of understood why that was happening. So the book follows um this girl Cameron who um parents die and then she has to move in with her grandmother and um like very religious aunt whose name is Aunt Ruth and um the basically she realizes and like through her experiences in high school etc that she is lesbian and she has feelings for women um so she has multiple like sort of um you know like relationships and experiences with girls her age um and then ultimately there is this one girl who um she's very like enamored by and they become best friends um and then uh basically this girl i think her name is bonnie something yeah so the brother catches them while they are going to have sex for the first time um and like he doesn't remember it but connie um goes and tells everyone about it and says that like you know how she is deeply ashamed but because um ruth, aunt ruth is like so deeply religious she sends um cameron off to like this gay conversion therapy camp uh where they essentially try to pray the gay out of you um and that's why she meets like a bunch of other people um and who are also um you know gay um and queer and have these feelings and um i just really love the characters i there are like scenes in this book that have stuck with me even till today um and even though it was it took me some time to kind of get used to it because i was just like i know this girl's going to go into like this gay conversion therapy thing and it didn't happen for like like some 200 pages or something so i was like okay uh but by the end of it i kind of realized why that was and i really appreciate it i really loved it i think this book should be read i think it's great i loved it so my third book is if i was your girl by meryl trusso now this follows a trans girl called amanda um she was raised in andrew and she moves to um a village in not a village <laughs> a village a small town with where her father lives um she was previously living in another city with her mom but then she had um a very bad experience there um so with um some anti uh trans people who might remember this now but yeah essentially that and she moves to this small town and essentially this, she decides not to tell um anyone that she is trans um so she uh, gets along really well with the girls um in the school um everyone's really nice to her she even starts dating this boy and she tells him that she's trans and he accepts her and everything's great um and basically it's a it's an interesting story because you get it get to understand things from her perspective i like the relationships that um she had with her father um and then with like you know the the friendships and the relationships she had with um the boy grant um and from what i've been told is that this book is just very like idyllic um in terms of like oh she's she passes off as um you know a woman and she's and uh it's not like hard to imagine i don't know there's a term for it um and yeah and she's like everyone accepts her and everything is cool so i know that a lot of people had that problem but i thought that it was an interesting book i definitely wanted to read more about like the trans experience um and i'm looking to read more so if you have any recommendations do let me know my fourth recommendation is seven husbands of evelyn hugo by taylor jenkins reed now taylor jenkins reed is one of my favorite authors because she is just like spectacularly and this book has um evelyn hugo who's a bi um woman and uh, she's basically like this huge movie star who's like basically now shunned herself from like public life and um no one really uh no one really knows what's up with her but then one day she gets caught like this random journalist um who's trying to climb up the ladders of um these magazines um i'm forgetting her name but she gets called um to do an interview and then um evelyn hugo tells her that you know what i want you to write my life story as a book and um she starts telling her about 
her life story and then there's more that happens but this book was just so well done i love the characters um of evelyn hugo of uh what is her agent's name agent's name i'll put it here somewhere um and then even celia just like i loved all of them i loved like all the relationships that everyone had it was just very well written um in my opinion um and she was just such a badass and you knew and she knew that she was making a lot of mistakes and she knew that she was taking advantage of people be it some things but she just wanted to like further her career and do things and i just like i was like yeah bitch get it like just get that shit um so yeah i liked the book a lot and i would recommend it the fifth book is the song of achilles which i don't know where my copy is but i will find it at some point of time anyway song of achilles is one of my favorite books of all time and i sobbed while reading this i recommend this to pretty much everyone under the like entire sun because it's just so nice and so lovely and so nice <laughs> anyway the book is of Achilles, um, who is the Greek myth uh, character, and his best friend, or in this case, in this book, his lover, Patroclus, um, and it follows their relationship from when they were children to um, when the actual, um, what is it, the war, the Troy, war of Troy happens. Um, and yeah, it's just so well written madeline miller is a goddamn genius i love her she's so good i will like mm, i love you it's so good please read this book i just loved it i know a lot of people found Cersei better but i loved song of achilles nothing will ever beat song of achilles for me you know i don't know it's just so good read it the next book i want to talk about is the Tin Man by Sarah Winman. Isn't this just a gorgeous cover? I bought this specifically for this one and then spent an absurd amount of money on it. Mummy, uh, don't, don't steal. Take it, take it. It's fine. I, I really love this book. Um, and yes, I really do love this book. Um, I don't remember too much about it, however, which is why I think I need to reread it. But it follows two boys. Um, they grew up together um, and they fall in love with each other however they drift apart one knows for sure that he's gay the other one falls in love with the woman um and then the other like all three of them become best friends um something tragic happens and they kind of like drift apart again after that but it's a story about their friendship um and just so much more and just this book is so lovely so great and um if you read it you will understand the the reasons why they have these daffodils and sunflowers sunflowers on it it's just so the next book that i want to talk about is cobalt blue which i've spoken about so many times and i think people now on bookstagram associate me with this book because i love this book and will not stop talking about it um this book basically follows um a brother and a sister who fall in love with the same man who is a paying guest in their house um the book is translated Marathi um, and essentially it goes through understanding um, the, the love story that each of them had with this man, um, the heartbreak and just what comes out of it. Um, I have spoken about this so much that I'm not going to speak about it more but um, I will link um, the video that I made which where I talk about the 10 um, Indian translated book recommendations where I've spoken about this book and uh, yeah I have uh, I recommend this so highly so read it so the next book i want to talk about is less by andrew sean gray this was a pulitzer prize winner and it's a really funny bitingly just dry and beautifully written book it follows uh the man called this man called andrew Ress, less who's kind of like a failed writer um he writes um he's start he wants to write this book but he's kind of like failing at it and his ex-lover is getting married and he is called for the wedding um and he doesn't want to go for it but uh like he doesn't want to not go for it as well like he doesn't want to be like oh i'm not gonna go for it because he doesn't want pity um but uh yeah he doesn't want to go to it because he'll just be pity again 
So he says that he's going to be out of town and opts out. But he's not actually going to be out of town. So what he does is he basically like accepts all these invitations to like various different places. Um, and he travels around the world. And you basically see that um, happen. And it's so great. He goes from like San Francisco, where he is actually, I think like uh, New York to Mexico to India to um, Morocco to Japan just like a bunch of places I've actually uh, like uh, reviewed this on the books on toast channel so I will link it up here somewhere um, and you can watch that instead of me rambling about this but Andrew Sean Greer is such a great man I love this book it was just so funny I recommend it all the time because it's just really well written oh and, and Andrew Les is great all right the next book i want to recommend to you is the extraordinaries by tj clune this is a book that i literally just finished a couple of days ago and i loved it um the book follows uh, actually a bunch of queer people um but the main character who is nikki bell he is, lives in this place called nova city um where actually two superheroes do exist and he writes fan fiction about them uh he has a bunch of really cool friends um the main being his best friend since childhood seth gray who he's kind of kind of discovering what that he has like um like feelings for him um and i just love this book oh and by the way this is a high school book like this is set in high school but it's so cute so well written there were parts where i was just like cackling and laughing out loud um because it was just so funny um and just all the experiences were just really well done um and i really enjoyed it i've actually spoken about it in my blog in my queer lit readathon blog so i will link that up for you so that you can just take in whatever i had to say um and yeah but i would recommend that this book comes out in july if i'm not mistaken so do check it out when it does because it is so good it's so good and it's gonna be a series and i know this is a series that i'm gonna want to read because like i'm just invested in all of these characters just all of them i love them um so i definitely want you to read it as well so i can discuss it with you okay and the last recommendation per se is kari by amrita Patil. now i don't remember too much about this book because i read it a while ago but it is the first um queer graphic novel in india um so it was uh of its time but it follows um kari who is a advertising executive in bombay the city i live um and she has just broken up with her long-term partner ruth um and then it's basically going through that and also going through the relationships that she has with her roommates um just like the bombay in general and actually jen um reviews this much better than i ever will because i have forgotten this book um and i plan to reread it so yeah i mean like look at this it's so well done amrita patil has written it and illustrated it but anyway i'm gonna link you to jen's video so um see her review and follow her because she's great and um yeah check this out it's really cool and really nice and i'm probably gonna read this very soon okay and then now i want to give you just recommendations i'm not going to talk too much about them um because the first two i don't remember that much uh the first one being aristotle and dante discover the secrets of the universe um and the second one being red white and royal blue even though i read this last year i don't remember too much of it uh which makes me think that i'm gonna have to read both of these books again or like just do like a quick summary of it um but i really loved both of them i thought they were really well written and even though I might not remember it, I remember the feelings that I had while reading it, and that's what counts. Okay. The third one is Giovanni's Room by James Baldwin. Um, this book is a classic, and so many people have spoken about this, so I'm not gonna talk about it in great detail, but it's a really well written book. I really loved it. Um, I read it last year again, and um, yeah, it's really great. Um, the fourth book is <laughs> Over the Top by Jonathan Van Ness. Oh my god, I love this book. I love Queer. I haven't watched the um, latest season yet because I just I want to fully binge it and be in the mood. Um, so I'm going to do that soon. But Jonathan Van Ness's um, memoir is so well written, so nice, so funny. Please, please read, listen 
listen to the audiobook because it's uh, narrated by him and it's so nice and so lovely. Um, I really liked it. I liked the things that he spoke about. Um, yeah, Jonathan Van Ness. Um, and then, of course, my last shout out will be to Vivek Tejuja's book. Vivek is a, a really close friend of mine um, and he is an avid reader and um, he's also now an author and he's written about his experience growing up gay in India in the 90s um, where he mixes it up with like his love for Bollywood and his love for books. So um, I really enjoyed it um, and I can't give like a, I mean I can't talk about this book enough because he's just so cute and I love him. I love you Vivek. Anyway, read his book, please. Okay, so that's about it. These are some of the books that I want to recommend to you. Again, please do check out some of the um, creators that I've linked below. Um, and uh, do give me some more recommendations. I would love to read more and just know of more books um, by queer authors or with queer characters. So, um, yeah. And I hope you have a good Pride Month and have a good day and everything goes well. And don't forget to subscribe if you wanna. And uh, bye!